Welcome to Vindal's Concept. And today I'm going to be responding to some of the viewers who said I should teach them on how to deal with the graph on, on table of values containing decimal values. You have the values you want to plot and the two of them contain decimal values. So most of the students face difficulty in trying to figure out what they will do and this video is made specifically for them so that they will become a professional in dealing with such graph. Okay, you are seeing the table of value on the screen. If you look at the table of value on the screen, you see the column for current which is 0 0.65 um, also 0 0.68, 0 0.7, 0, 0 0.72 You also look at the one on the column of L inverse or 1 over L You are going to have 0 0.011, 0 0.013, 0 0.014 And these are the values that you are plotting The current on the vertical and L inverse on the horizontal You want to remove all the decimal points and deal with them as a whole number Now, let me take you how to do it now, if you look at these vertical axis, you are going to see what I wrote multiplying by 100. You see multiply by 100. It, that means that this is six, 64. When you divide it by 100, you come back to the original value it is. So what I did was, on the table of value, as you are seeing on the table of value, I multiplied everything on that column by 100 in order to bring them to a number which is a whole number. And that is what I did. So instead of having 0 0.64, 0 0.68, 0 0.70, I now have 64, 68, 70, 72, 74, and 78. All the numbers here have been converted to a whole number. So it is simply a means of converting from decimal to whole number. That is what I did on the vertical axis. Then coming to the horizontal axis also, if you are seeing this L inverse, you see why I multiply by 1000. It means that this 5, for me to get this 5, I multiply something by 1000 to get 5. This is 10, Mod, uh, multiply something to get 10. So for you to go back to the original table, you have to divide by 1000 to get the original thing. So this is a cheat. This is just cheating them by bringing a high level of technicality in handling your table of values so that it will be easy for you. So that is it. Therefore, I have to tell you what I did for my scale. On the vertical axis, I'm going to tell you that, um, let's say, two, okay, from here, to five lines represent one CM in a standard wire graph. One CM represents five lines. So I'm going to look at this vertical axis as five lines, which is one centimeter. So I'm going to say that, one centimeter is equal to two units on the vertical axis. That is it. Because if you count this line, one, two, three, four, five. Five lines in any standard wire, um, wire graph represent one centimeter. Sometimes you can use your meter root to measure the graph, you will find that. Even though that sometimes the people that make the graph, they make mistake, it is not always what is expected that five lines represent one centimeter. Then 10 lines represent 2 cm. 5 lines represent 1 cm. 10 lines represent 2 cm. Now, on the horizontal axis, I'm going to say that this is 10 lines. I'm going to say that 2 cm is equal to 5 units on the horizontal axis. So this is my scale. In every wire graph, you need to write your scale. You write the unit, what you are plotting. I'm plotting current, which is measured in ampere on the vertical. I am plotting L inverse, which is also centimeter inverse. And I multiply by 100. So any uh, examiner who sees that you multiply this by 1000 will be able to know that you are coming from somewhere, which is a decimal table of values. Now we go on and put our values. It's going to be easy. Now, one other thing I have to advise every student is that you need to find what each of these lines represents. I say that it's very, 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 very important. You need to find what each line represents. Now, without wasting of our time, 
10 lines represent 5. That means 1 line should represent, uh, that is 5 divided by 10, which is 0 0.5. So each line here represents 0 0.5. Then coming to the vertical axis, if 5 lines, if 5 lines represent 2, This is 64, 68, oh, okay. No, I'm supposed to have 66 here. It's supposed to be 66, because I'm going to 2. This is 66. Okay, um, two lines represent five lines. Just two divided by five, you are having 0 0.4. So on this vertical axis, each line represents 0 0.4. While on the horizontal axis, each line represents 0 0.5. So we are going in to put our values. So on the, I'm going to look at 65. This is 66. 65 should be somewhere. So this place, I, I wrote 62 comma zero. That means this line represent should be 64. I have 64 here, and this line is zero. So this is 64. So how do I get 65? So when this line is 0 0.4, how do I get 65? So 0 0.4 times three plus 64, 65.2, uh, so I'm going to have 0 0.4 times 2 plus 64. I'm going to have 0 0.4, so uh, the, the point 65 is between the third line, this is 0, 1, 2, 3. It is between this line and this line. So I'm going to uh, look at it at this point, at that point, so leaving it there. Then, what, where does it correspond with um, 11? 11 is on this as this is 5, this is 10. So, if each one represents 0 0.5, 11 is going to be this is 10, 10 and a half, 11. So, this is going to be, if you trace this part, so this is going to be at this point. That is that. Then, I'm going further. On um, the next one is 68, 68 is already here, the other one is 13, so if this is 68, this is 11, 11 and a half, 12, 12 and a half, 13, it's going to be 13 at this point, under 68, this is it, this is 10, 10 and a half, 12, this is 10, 10 and a half, 11, 11 and a half, 12, 12 and a half, 13. So this is 13, which is under 68. So we are going to 70. After 68, you have 70. 70 is already here. 70 under 14. If this is 13, 14 is going to be uh, 13 and a half, 14. 14 is here. So we trace it to 70. Then we keep moving. So under 17, and 17 is under 17, 17 is already here. So this is 15, 15 and a half, 16, 16 and a half, 17, 17 is here, which is at this point. So that is it. We keep going. Under 20 is under 75. This is 20, this is 74. We need to find 75. 74 point 0 point 74 plus 0 point 4 is 74 point 4 plus 0 point 4 74 point 8. That's two lines. Anytime if I add, okay, if I add 0 point 2, I'm going to have 75. So 74 is at this point, the first one, second one, so at the middle. So between this line. Now, if you look at this very well, it's also the same thing what we got when we treated this as a decimal. So we are going to find our line of base fit. Our line of base fit, we put this. Still the same thing we got. So this is my graph. This is my graph. Now it's my line of base fit because this point is out in the other part of the line. You know this is the line. 
this point is out of this part. This one enter. This one fall out here. This one enter. And this one enter. So out of these five points, at least three points have entered the line. One goes this way. This goes this way. So they balance as they are going this part. So we decided to say that this is our line of base fit. This is, as I'm telling you, before you'll be able to understand this. So this is the table of value we have. And this is that, exactly what I had when I used ordinary logo to plot the graph. Now let us take our slope and check if our slope is going to be the same with what we had previously. So I'm not going to waste much time here. This point enters the line and this point enters the line. I'm going to use the two of them as my two points to join to find my right angle triangle. So this is point A, point B, and point C. So with this, I'm going to trace it down. If you trace it down to this point, it's going to have 75. Minus, I will trace this part to this place, it's going to have 68. All over. If I trace this one down, I'm going to have 20 minus. If I trace this one down, I'm going to have this is um, this is uh, this is Okay, we check the table of values, and that is going to be after the first point, second point, that is 13. So this is 13, I'm going to have this. That this number was multiplied by, by, by 100, while this one was multiplied by 1000. So what are we going to do? Uh, this 7, we are going to divide the 7 by 100. So when I find what we had in the previous graph, 10, which is exactly what we had when we used normal values to plot this graph. So this is going to be on the vertical axis I'm plotting A, on the horizontal axis I'm plotting L inverse, which is going to be C inverse. So this is it. Let me do a little recap. What I did here was that. I multiply this by 100, I multiply everything here by 1000. Simply means that at this point, you need to reconvert this thing back to where it came from. This one was because you multiply by 100. Before, this minus this is 7. This 7 is not what you're supposed to have. You're supposed to have a decimal number. So bring it back to where what it used to be. You divide this 7 by the number. This one is for the vertical. And vertical was multiplied by 100. You multiply by 100, that's why you had 7. So divide by 100 to bring it back to what it used to be. So when we divide it by 100, I have 0 0.07. Now this 7 also is what is we had on the denominator, which is representing the, the horizontal axis. And in horizontal axis, we multiply by 1000. So to bring it back to what it's supposed to be, you have to divide by 1000. When I divide it by 1000, I have this. Then this divided by this, we are going to have 10, which was exactly what I had when I plotted normally. Thank you, and I know that you understand. If you don't understand, you can pause the video and listen again. And if there is anything confusing you yet again, please don't forget to share your thoughts in the comment button. And remember to share with your friends, subscribe, and like. Thank you.